Um, I guess the first thing we need to identify is specificity is related to performance. And the first question we need to ask is what is performance? Now that is going to be relative to whatever sporting environment we exist in. So for Dean and the boys, clearly uh, performance in their space is going to be related to, so their umpiring background is going to be making the right decision at the right time. Yeah? For Ronnie, athletic sprints running background, it's going to be clearly focused on accomplishing or covering a distance in the shortest period of time possible. Now in team-based sports, so your hockey, your basketball, your football, performance is really generally justified or identified to be success, so winning. Okay? So the way that we identify performance across sports is hugely varied. Yeah? But I think that there is, and if we look at most identifications around that of what performance actually speaks to, there's kind of three key domains that we look at. The first, I think everyone in the room here could identify. There is a technical element that really undefines or under, sorry, which really underpins what performance is. Yeah. There's the physical side. So clearly we need to have the physical capacity to perform in any of the sports we operate in. As an umpire, they need to run, I don't know the numbers exactly, but I'd be saying 15, 16 k's a game at times. Yeah. Our marathon runners have to cover a certain distance, have to have a certain strength level to be able to perform at that, uh, in that environment. Yeah? Our footballers need to have the strength to be in those combative situations. So we need to have the physical underpinnings to be able to perform. That's really a no-brainer. And then the other side of the coin is clearly going to be we have to appreciate the tactical component. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to come from, going to come from a, um, a head coaching perspective. Yeah? And what you teach to a fair point is that of the tactical development. Yeah? But again, that is one component of the entire sport, of all that that sits in the performance space. Yeah? Now, specificity really occurs when all three marry up to that performance piece. We get that performance, or we get optimised performance in specificity and we see the, the alignment of that tactical, technical and physical component. And we might also, and Fleur would certainly argue there's that psychological or um, that psychological component. Now, it's really important that the focus of specificity will change as the season or as the years progress. Okay, so we're never necessarily going to have, and we, we understand as coaches, we don't simply have the time to focus on all three of these realms across a training week. Okay, or, or really a training mesocycle. So we need to oscillate through what we are primarily focusing on developing in our young athletes or our senior athletes. Yeah? So du during the general performance or general um, preparation phases, what are we focusing on? Now you might, this may change for coaches and depending on the space you're in, but often what we see, and I come from a football background, during the general prep phase, we are focusing primarily on that of the technical skill development, reacquainting the boys with footballs, uh, and the physical side, so getting the volume into the legs. Yeah? As we progress through the season, we may say, so towards uh, the middle of pre-season, we may see a shift towards that of a greater focus on the tactical side. What is the team trying to achieve uh, by way of ball movement, by way of defensive um, transition? Uh, and still, we were usually, pre-season usually still means there's a fair bit of physical orientation. As we near the actual competition, so that last sort of four to six weeks, clearly there's going to be a shift again. There's going to be a greater focus on other attributes. So that may be our tactical, that may be our technical consolidation. Yeah? During in-season, now this is just because it's nice and easy to do too, but we might just do the tactical, the tactical and the physical. We may do the tactical and the technical. Really in season, we know, particularly in team, team oriented sports where we might have, in football's case, 22 weeks of, or plus finals of, of um, competition, that it's going to oscillate. We're going to see times where it's going to be technical and tactical that we're going to focus on, where we might just focus on physical development. It's never going to be a one um, or, or a consistent model for the entire, that entirety of a, of a training season. And usually when we focus or shift to an off-season phase, most typically, we'll see a shift primarily to that of just one singular training focus. That, in my realm, is usually uh, just a physical, but it may be a technical or a tactical focus as well, depending on what the coaches identify as being sort of the area of deficiency. Yeah? Now, the question that 
we really started with at the start is, and whose job is it to develop it? Well, it really depends on what your team looks like. What is your coaching team? And now, looking around the room, I can see guys from Cedar. I think there were some people operating in school systems. So uh, there's also guys, so the, the umpiring commission, um, Ronnie, you'd have a different team as well. So we're all going to have different types of coaching teams. So we might, at the very minimum, have a head coach. Okay, And if we are just a standalone hedge coach, well, it is your job to understand how to develop each of these different realms. Yeah, My, uh, Some of us may be lucky enough to have assistant or specialty coaches. We may have development coaches who, who operate with the younger athletes coming through our programs. We may have S&C coaches and rehab orientated coaches, uh, mo uh, load monitoring coaches. So it depends really on the environment that we exist within. But I think you can probably all agree that the fundamental idea of what it takes to create performance doesn't change. It's just, it shifts all the orientation of whose role is to develop each of these different elements does, yeah? So in a lot of our traditional models of, I guess, uh, athlete development or, or really identifying training specificity itself, uh, traditional models really uh, seen little collaboration between, and this is in bigger teams, by the way, uh, traditionally we see little collaboration between that of the S&C coach, the head coach, potentially the development coach, usually because uh, coaches like to stick to their area, but um, they prioritise their own focuses. So typically you might see, and certainly my experiences working with coaches, is the head coach might say, we have to nail this, this tactical focus. Okay, We need to make sure that the boys are defending well, we need to make sure they're moving through... Um, the ball movement of the 50s, fine, okay? And so they'll want to spend a lot of time on the tactical. Whereas development coaches are clearly going to prioritise often the skill development, yeah? And as a physical, as an S&C coach, strength and conditioning coach, well, clearly my prerogative is to develop the physical capacities of my athletes, yeah? Now, you guys will understand that there is only so many hours in a training week. We can't just keep adding time to an athlete's training program. Otherwise, we get injury, we get burnout, all these things that we know are negative to this centralised performance piece. Yeah? So, what is a way that we can, or how do we start to consider models which optimise this performance piece? So, one of the questions is, how can we encourage collaboration? How can we look at optimising... Um, the, the time that we spend when we have these split priorities, yeah? So what if I want to develop, at any given point, both technical and physical capacities? Are there ways we can create collaboration or styles of training we can create that facilitate this? Well, certainly, and I apologise for anyone that doesn't sit in the football space, but th these are kind of going to be in the football space. Um, but so if I want to align these two elements, the technical and the physical. We can do very simple closed skill drills. So you kick your cone to kick cone kicking drills, kicking from point A to point B. Yeah? But we can change the physiological or the technical uh, uh, system development very, very simply by doing or addre addressing things like work to rest ratios. So how long is an athlete spending on each cone? What are the distances between each cone? Okay, because we can change or we can program. Uh, during our general preparation stage, much longer volume uh, accumulating style kicking drills or, or hand passing drills just through consideration of these factors. We can look at the number of athletes on any given cone and clearly that's going to change our work to rest ratios available. Yeah. What if we want to look at changing our or developing our ta uh, tactical sorry, and our physical side of things? Well, we can do that, I would argue most effectively, through match sim style drills. Okay, clearly to develop uh, tactical sides, we, we're generally going to do it in match simulator style drills. Yeah? Now, again, we can consider the work to rest ratios. So do we, if we're looking at aerobic development, well, we're generally not going to spend any more than four to five minutes in a match sim style drill, a really high intensity match sim style drill, I should say. Yeah? If we're looking at really, really high intensity or like our sprint speed development, then we're going to change our work to rest ratios where we spend four minutes of working and we might spend 12 minutes of rest and conversation so the athletes can recover so that when they go back to that performance or that drill, they can do it again at that really, really high intensity. The coach is happy because they're still getting the tactical focus and the S&C coach is happy because they're getting that really, really high speed running that Joyce is going to measure with you guys through GPS. 
yeah? Um, we can change our opposition out number, so we can create opposition out numbers. We can have, rather than have 18 or 16 on the field, we can have 22 on the field to make the drill or the task harder. Uh, and we can have no-go zones or, or change rules simply to create uh, overflow or over overrunning. So making, for instance, as you transition out of the back line, every, every defender has to be forward of the centre circle. Okay, that it forces the running piece, forces the running volume onto them. So through tactical or through consideration, sorry, uh, of specificity, we can create these environments. So what about then the tactical and the technical? So we can look at small-sided games. And these are really, really effective, clearly, at developing lots or creating lots and lots and lots of contact, so um, skill contacts or skill executions, okay, with the decision-making piece. How do we facilitate or how do we change the technical demands in this tactical environment? Simply by changing the field size or the number of athletes within that dimension or, again, creating rule changes that optimise the skill, okay, the technical skill and the tactics that we're trying to facilitate. So then, the question is, how do we challenge the traditional model of people often working very uh, isolated on their different areas? Okay, and, and which we, we should realise means that we don't optimise the, the full development potential of athletes. It's through proactive planning. So Chris sort of spoke to um, the meso cycle, the macro cycle. So understanding where are we actually trying to go with these individuals? Because if we understand that, we can backwards fill and we can make sure everyone understands where their piece fits. It's through knowledge integration. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do with you guys in the SNC unit. So for you to understand what an SNC coach wants to achieve out of a session, you have to have a base, even if it's a very basic, an understanding of physiology. You have to have an understanding or at least an appreciation of what strength truly is, of what um, endurance truly is, or aerobic capacity or your VO2 max. If you understand these, you can have good leveled conversations with the SNC coach. And you can also have critical conversations because I often see coaches um, present ideas that aren't necessarily founded in the basics of science. Yeah? So by having an understanding of the SNC or the, this knowledge integration, we can create much, much, much more effective models of training specificity. Active communication, the piece that uh, Joycey spoke to, it's about seeking uh, feedback, providing feedback and being critical with each other. Yeah? And finally, it's about reflective practice, and I think this is a really huge one. It's considering what did the drill actually do, or what did this phase actually seek to accomplish? Did it accomplish it? Why or why not? Now, this integration model, it takes time to get to... Uh, you're, not, you're never going to hit the integra integrated model perfectly the first time. Yeah? It takes trial and error. And it's through this reflective practice that we actually start to build towards the best outcome for our athletes. All right, that's me.